हाई स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम इन केमिस्ट्री क्लासेस वी आर स्टडिंग अबाउट द एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री एंड इन अवर लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द थर्मोग्रेवी मेट्रिक एनालिसिस नाउ वी हैव टू स्टडी सम मोर टॉपिक्स दैट इज डिफरेंशियल थर्मल एनालिसिस एंड द डिफरेंशियल स्कैनिंग कैलोरीमेट्री डी टी ए एंड डी एस सी वी हैव टू स्टडी इन दिस लेक्चर ओके सो फर्स्टली वी आर स्टार्टिंग ईयर डिफरेंशियल थर्मल एनालिसिस दैट इज कॉल्ड डी टी ए ओके फ्रॉम द नेम ईयर यू कैन सी this is differential it means we have to study the sample in a differential way differential way it means with respect to a reference compound so here we are taking one thing is the sample and another one is the inert reference compound okay now see here what is meant by this inert reference compound inert means that is not acting it means any sample that we are taking if we are heating it okay if we are passing it through any temperature change then it will not undergo any physical or the chemical process it will remain inert or intact okay in whole the process that we are doing in whole the thermal process okay so it will remain inert while our sample will undergo some type of thermal change okay it will undergo any physical change or it will undergo any chemical change in that particular temperature range okay so here we are taking one thing is the inert reference compound and another one is the sample okay and we have to do their differential study it means we have to take the difference in their temperature okay with respect to the time or temperature okay so what is happening here see what is its general principle firstly we have to see here principle so here see this is suppose a sample okay this is our sample and this is the inert reference compound now both of them are he being heated here okay this is burner suppose this is the burner and both of them are heated now so what will happen their temperature will increase okay now this reference compound this is inert okay so in whole the process it will remain inert it will not undergo any physical or the chemical change but this is our sample okay this is the sample when we are heating it its temperature will rise and it will undergo any physical or the chemical process suppose it is melting okay when it is starts melting what will happen we know that melting is a endothermic process what is meant by endothermic process do you know endothermic process means whenever the heat is being absorbed in any process if heat is being absorbed then it is called the endothermic process okay suppose we are doing melting or here it is vaporized vaporization or sublimation or it is undergoing the transition from one state to another state whole of these processes are endothermic processes okay so in all of these processes there is a absorption of the energy and when the substance is absorbing energy what will happen its temperature will decrease okay so here there will be a change in their temperature it means its temperature will remain same but its temperature will decrease so we are getting here a temperature difference del t okay and we are plotting this temperature difference against the temperature or the time okay this is the basic principle of this whole process dta right suppose the sample is undergoing the exothermic process now what is meant by exothermic process it means any process in which there is the evolution of the heat heat is being evolved okay in exothermic process heat is evolved so all these process like crystallization it is a exothermic process okay or decomposition or oxidation these all processes are exothermic processes these all processes are exothermic processes right so in all of these process heat is being evolved so what will happen the temperature of the sample will 
increase right if it undergoes the exothermic process then heat will increase why because it will evolve the heat so heat will increase so temperature will increase its temperature will remain same but its temperature will increase so again we are getting a temperature difference and we can plot this against the temperature or time so in this way we are getting a curve okay so now see what type of curve we are getting all right so when we are plotting a graph on the y axis we are plotting the difference of the temperature between the sample and the inert reference compound and on the x axis we are plotting either the temperature or the time okay so when we are plotting here see what will happen suppose here an exothermic process take place so what happens in the exothermic process the heat is evolved by the sample okay so its temperature will increase okay so the temperature of the sample will be more as compared to the inner reference compound in this way we are getting a peak here okay we will get a positive peak in the case of the exothermic process this is the exothermic process now suppose the substance undergo melting then what will happen it will absorb the heat and when it is absorbing the heat what will happen its temperature will decrease right so we are getting a negative peak in this manner okay this is for the endothermic process so in this way you are getting the peaks and by the area of this dta peak we can find out the enthalpy change okay so this curve is also used for finding out the change of the enthalpy the next process is the differential scanning calorimetry that is also denoted as dsc the principle of the dta and dsc is almost same there is somewhat difference between them okay so see here in this case also we are taking the inert reference compound and the sample here generally the sample is a polymer sample okay so we are taking a sample and the inert reference compound that is not undergoing the thermal process under that temperature range but see here here we have to what is the difference between the dta and dsc in dta we are seeing a temperature difference we are doing a thermal process and we are seeing the temperature difference between the sample and the inert compound right but in the dsc when we are doing the thermal process then in whole the process we have to take the temperature as the constant okay here we have to take for the sample as well as for the inner reference compound the same temperature in whole the process okay the temperature will remain same right so suppose the system the sample is undergoing the endothermic process then what will happen in this process the heat is absorbed okay so its temperature will decrease but we have to take here a zero temperature difference between the sample and the reference so what we will have to do we have to provide the energy okay we will have to provide the energy to the sample okay so that the process can happen and the temperature will remain same of both the places okay this is our sample okay and this is the reference compound okay this is the reference compound holder and this is the sample holder and here we have put in the sample okay and this is the heater okay so now what will happen Bo at both the places we have to take the same temperature the del t should be equal to 0 okay so for this we will have to provide the energy to the sample when it is undergoing the endothermic process like melting okay so we will have to provide the energy from the outside right so here what we have to do here we have to put a plot between the energy and the temperature right so we will get a positive peak but when the sample is undergoing the exothermic process in this process what will happen heat will evolve okay so the temperature of the sample will increase now we have to put the temperature difference zero so what we will have to do we will have to 
remove this heat okay we will have to remove this energy right so now the energy change will be negative in this case the energy change will be positive in the case of endothermic process but in the case of exothermic process the energy change will be negative okay and here it will be positive we are supplying the heat here and here we are removing the heat okay so now when we are seeing the graph in the case of the dsc we are plotting a graph between the heat flux and the temperature okay so suppose here the exothermic process is happening then in the exothermic process the energy is being removed from the system right so we are getting a negative peak okay and suppose it is undergoing the endothermic process then energy is being provided right so we are getting a positive peak in this way this is for the endothermic process and this is for the exothermic process right okay so in this way we are getting the peaks now right now see here by the peak area we can do the whole analysis why if we know the area of the peak then we can find out the enthalpy of transition del h that is given by k times a okay here what is this k this k is called the calorimetric constant and this a this a is the area under the peak okay so if we know the area under the peak then we can find out the enthalpy of the transition by this formula okay so two things you have to remember here okay one thing is that the area under the peak is directly proportional to heat absorbed or heat evolved and another thing is that the height of the peak is directly proportional to the rate of the reaction okay these two things you have to remember here first thing is what the area of peak is directly proportional to the heat that is being absorbed or evolved and the height of the peak is directly proportional to the rate of reaction the next thing is the factors affecting the dsc curve the first factor is the furnace heating rate another one is the recording speed third one is the furnace atmosphere fourth one is the geometry of sample holder and the fifth one is the amount of sample its nature and its particle size okay if you want some more details you can see it in the books okay i am not going here in the details see here one more thing is the applications of the dsc dsc is basically used to study the thermal transitions of the polymers second thing it can be used for determining the heat capacity if we have to find out heat capacity we can find out it with the help of the curve dsc curve okay we know that in this case the heat flow is plotted against the temperature right and by the graph we can find out the this thing we can find out the q upon t okay now see here one thing heat flow is what heat flow is the heat supplied per unit time right and what is the heating rate heating rate is the change in the temperature in per unit time okay and if we divide this q by t by the this will be temperature right so 
it will be in this manner del t divided by t then what we are getting we are getting q upon del t and this is what this is the heat capacity okay so in this way we can divide and we can find out the heat capacity right another thing for which the dsc can be used is for the glass transition temperature we can use it to find out the glass transition temperature right and by this we can also find out the crystallization temperature okay and by this we can also find out if a polymer sample is crystalline or amorphous right so this is all about the dsc differential scanning calorimetry i think you can understand this whole topic okay this is the whole about the dta and dsc and you will see here that only the descriptive types of the questions are asked in the question papers so if you know somewhat about them then you can do such type of questions quite easily okay meet you in the next video thank you